Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you where you can find some remote part-time jobs consistently. So instead of me showing you some companies where you would normally just, or you might just find one listing that's available right now, but most likely you won't see any in the future, I'm going to show you where you can consistently find companies that typically hire for part-time remote jobs. So one place to check is called Speakeasy Marketing Inc. Speakeasy Marketing Inc. is a company that typically does marketing services for lawyers. So they are a very specific like niche type of marketing company and they have a few different jobs available right now. You have answering service reps, customer service reps, sales development reps, answering service, customer service specialist, and a writer and editor. The thing about this company is typically they start you out part-time and then you work your way up to full-time later on if things go well. So if you look at say the answering services rep, for instance, you start out as you see part-time 20 to 25 hours a week with potential for full-time 35 to 40 hours a week. And then this is going to start you at contract 1099, 100% remote. And this one, they say about, you know, somewhere between 13 and $16 an hour, depending on how long you've been there. And then after you've been there a while, sometimes you can get other bonuses as well. But this is one place that has a lot of customer service type jobs. Occasionally you'll see sales and writing or editing as well, like they do right now. But for instance, with this one, you would basically um, want to have skill for basically being detail oriented. You need to be a team player, reliable and trustworthy, good at multitasking, a driven learner, and good communicator. They say uh, things like personal computer or laptop capable of running software necessary for the job, Hire, wired headset with Microsoft for wired headset with microphone for taking calls, quiet place to work, reliable internet. They don't really require experience for a lot of these either like this one they don't mention any experience being required here then you have the customer service rep this one basically they want you to have a great track record of success and want to be re recognized for your contributions they don't really mention if that means you've done customer service or not before they do start you around twenty dollars an hour for this job then you work up to 22 an hour after the pay review from the uh, 90 days of being there and then after six months, they basically start you with these book of business bonuses, which can equate to an extra 600 to 800 plus dollars per month. In addition to that, there are many bonuses at any given time, including commission on upsells, which is 15% of everything sold, contract renewals, which is $500 per renewal, and $100 per review for Google Map reviews from satisfied customers. So they have a lot of different things that they kind of add on there over time. And this is another one of those jobs where you're doing just kind of customer support via phone and email. And a lot of times, again, they will start you at part-time and you would work your way up to full-time. So this would be a great company to check as well if you are looking for something part-time and you don't, you know, you have the option of going full-time later on. Here's another example of one that starts you out part-time at the same company. It's the answering service customer service specialist. And this one, they actually start you with higher pay than the other answering service rep, 18 an hour, 19, all the way up to around 20 after 90 days. And for this one, basically you would start at part-time as well. And they tell you right here, it would be around 20 hours a week at first and later to expand your hours over time. So this would normally fit into somewhere in 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. And then again, your, your 20 hours a week will be scheduled in there, and then you could work your way up to more hours later on. But for this one, you're also doing things like booking appointments, and you're going to be uh, forwarding any support requests, complaints, or items needing attention to the proper support team. For clients that are difficult to get in contact with, use a series of voicemails and emails to maximize chances to contact them. Be the primary account manager for customers, quickly report any problems with any service when detected and things like that. And then qualifications for this one, basically uh, a home office setup with a internet, computer, phone. You need fluency in Microsoft Excel and Word using Gmail, sending attachments and things like that. Experience with RingCentral and Zoho CRM would also be a plus. 
and they do not expect you to work nights or weekends, which is also very nice. They also want you to be tech savvy, but other than that, they don't really require any experience. So those are a couple of examples out of a few different job listings you can find that are typically at a company who hires part-time and sometimes will work you up to full-time later. Now they don't actually have like a glass door page yet from what I've seen, but this is a company that's been around for 14 years. They were actually uh, incorporated in 2009 um, or actually incorporated in 2010, but the business was started in 2009. So they've been around a very long time. They have an A plus Better Business Bureau rating so far. And I think it's safe to say they are legit and they do offer a legitimate service. They have uh, 14 plus years of being in business and that is verifiable through Better Business Bureau. Another company you may have heard of where you can actually find part-time jobs fairly often is at U-Haul. U-Haul is a company that always has like customer support type jobs that are part-time. For instance, this would be one example I found recently. Now, some of them are, they'll say remote, but you may have to go in person to some locations as well that are near you. This is one that seems to be just pretty much remote only. So that's why I included this one as the example, but they have many others all across the United States that are part-time, and they say remote, but they'll also say you may also be at location at times. So I, I guess it would be more like hybrid. But with this, with this job, for instance, basically they want you to apply by July 31st, 2024. This is gonna be seasonal for this one. Now, some of these are seasonal. This is part-time or full-time permanent positions. So you do have options here and they want you to work at least eight weeks. Um, this one is 25 to 40 hours a week, and they want they prefer you to be available 30 or more hours if possible. And also, you need to be able to at least work one eight-hour shift on a weekday or a weekend day per week. So some of the shifts will not be like four hours; they're going to be a full eight-hour shifts. And sometimes you may have to work on weekends. So then, you know, as far as the initial education and training. They have paid comprehensive three-week education as a program for helping you build the skills you need for doing this work. They typically pay you somewhere around uh, 17 to 20 an hour once you factor everything in with a base pay of $13 per hour. So minimum experience, this one they would want one year of customer service or sales experience. Um, this could be even in retail or something like that. So if you've ever, like even something you would get as maybe your first job out of high school could probably qualify you for this. Strong interpersonal and communication skills, ability to prioritize and, prioritize and multitask, and successful completion of a job-related assessment is required. R work from home requirements here. All work duties, including initial education, must be performed at your home address in a private, quiet work area. Dependent and child care arrangements must be made as if you were working in person in an office environment. So they don't want you to, they know a lot of people work from home and they, they don't want you to be distracted, in other words, by having your, your kids, you know, in and out all the time or your dog or something like that. Now, uh, computer specifications are pretty easy to meet here for the most part. They do want you to have Windows, it seems. I don't know if they would actually accept if you had Apple um, webcam and USB headset are also something they want and the internet speed is not too bad in terms of requirements. So this would be a great company to check as well just for part-time gigs. And U-Haul has a 3.2 out of 5 star rating, 53% recommend working here to a friend. As far as benefits, they have a 3.5 out of 5 star rating. I doubt you'll get a lot of benefits if you're part-time, but it'd be good to know if you end up working your way up to full-time. Another thing that really sticks out about U-Haul is the difficulty is very easy to apply here. Two out of five is extremely easy. Most companies I cover are somewhere in the three range. And then the positive to negative feedback ratio here is actually very good. 63% positive compared to 19% negative is very, very good. Most companies are split pretty evenly there. Next, we have a company called Scribe America. Scribe America actually hires for remote part-time jobs called telescribes. And these are pretty frequently available. So you can check them pretty much anytime you're you're in need of something that's, you know, as long as you're okay with making 10 to $15 per hour and you're, a, you know, you're fairly good at typing, that's the main stuff that you need to be okay with. But part-time, 
You get to work completely from home. Normally they hire in the United States. I think sometimes they hire in Canada, but most of the time I see these in the United States. And here, what you're going to do is they want you to first off commit up to one year and not just get this job until you get a different job and then just bail after two months. They want you to stay for around a year or more. Be flexible enough to work two shifts per week. Now, when I say two shifts, I don't mean super short shifts. I mean like longer eight to 10 hour shifts in some cases. Ability to type over 50 words per minute is also important here. So if you wanna test your word per minute typing speed, you can do that for free at typingtest.com. You can, you can start the test right here. You can use typing lessons to improve. So what you're essentially doing is you are going to do data entry for physicians, which basically means people you know, go to the doctor and then the doctor will prescribe something or help them with whatever it is they need help with, even if it's just a checkup. And then you will be the one who updates the records in the database for that patient based on the findings or whatever the doctor uh, had to prescribe for them and things like that. So you're going to basically do all the data entry for the physician. But you don't have to be there in person like a lot of medical scribe positions. This one as a telescribe allows you to either listen to a recording or watch a video of the patient visit for the sake of inputting the information into the database from home instead of you having to be there in person. So you gain substantial knowledge in how um, to appropriately document patient history, physical exams, assessments, diagnostic results, medical procedures, treatment plans, and more. You will navigate the facility computer system and electronic medical record, monitor pending labs and radiology orders for results to help guide patient care. You also review past history and test results on patients, which are critical in driving medical decisions by your provider. So they do mention benefits here, but most of these are for full-time employees as they tell you right here. So I wouldn't worry too much about benefits here. This is just something that it's a great just part-time thing to do and it doesn't require really any experience. Uh, 3.1 out of 5 stars, 45% recommend working here to a friend. As far as the interview process here, they have a very easy rating of 2.2 out of 5 difficulty and a very good rating of 71% positive compared to 10% negative in terms of the experience interviewing here. Next, we have a company called Live World. Liveworld.com is a website and they frequently hire for social media moderators and what they call social media agents. These people basically uh, monitor online communities and maybe you know chat in a, kind of a customer support manner online with customers as well as just monitor engagement and uh, possibly um, take action on certain, certain comments or things like that. But this is kind of like a moderator community manager type of job. So what you're going to do is provide social customer service engagement for marketing, adverse events management, and or protection of brand image. So this is an hourly part-time work at home position. And again, they are pretty frequently hiring for these. Uh, primary responsibilities for this right here are to review and take appropriate action on social media posts according to brand guidelines. So this could be rejecting, approving, content tracking, and escalating. You will triage and respond to customer questions, selecting and personalizing previously prepared responses or in a social context. You will also actively engage with online users, stimulating, guiding, participating in conversations, research customer service answers, in some cases, client CRM systems, and identify and escalate trends, topics, sentiment, and emerging issues. So required skills and traits here, ability to connect with people and communicate in courteous conversational style and make decisions according to guidelines, ability to compose well-written messages, and strong keyboarding skills, ability to navigate between multiple systems or applications simultaneously, demonstrate personal or professional success engaging in a social channel. In terms of qualifications here, they want a minimum 18 years of age or older required. And then after they say that right here, they say two to three years of experience in online moderation and engagement and or online customer service is desirable. Now the way I interpret this is this first section here for your age is required and then everything after that word required is desirable. I think that's what they mean by this. They prefer two to three years experience but they're willing to possibly look at you know, interviewing you or hiring you even if you don't necessarily meet that exact number. So some experience in a call center environment is helpful 
Um, work at home experience is helpful. Social media moderation engagement experience preferred but not required. Healthcare background desirable but not required. Experience with social media tools such as Live World, Salesforce, Precore, Coros, or similar tools desirable. So pretty much everything you see on here, like college degree even, is preferred. Uh, all that stuff is preferred or desirable. It doesn't mean it's necessarily a actual requirement that is non-negotiable. Now, in terms of environment and technical requirements, which basically means what do you need for your home office? Uh, High-speed internet, telephone access, ability to work in a quiet, secure home office atmosphere. Uh, work must be performed on a desktop or laptop and not a tablet or mobile phone. And uh, language fluency requirements. This is basically like English is required. All other languages are not necessarily required, but would probably give you a leg up on maybe some of the competition. So if you do speak any of these other languages outside of English and you are already fluent in English, I would definitely let them know. Another thing to keep in mind, they do sometimes hire outside the US, but right now they are not. Right now they are hiring in US only. Now, as far as what's like to work here, 3.7 out of five stars, 65% recommend working here to a friend. If you are able to get benefits, which you probably won't, but 2.4 out of five stars is what you get there. And then interview wise, they have a 1.7 out of five difficulty rating, which is obviously extremely easy. And then the interview process here, 67% positive compared to 17% negative is very good. And then salary wise, if you wanna look up how much you could possibly make here as like a social media agent or a moderator, you see uh, moderator, $36 an hour, social media moderator, 21, and then agent, 36. So you have you know around 22 people between these two saying 36 an hour, and then 14 people saying 21 an hour. So somewhere in that ballpark, I would say. Next, we have a company called Twine. Twine is a place where you can find all sorts of freelance animation, graphic design, software development, and other types of jobs all the time. Like this is a great place to find some part-time gigs where um, it's more for like an artistic type of job. If you're a creative type, I guess would be a better way to put that. So you see right here, the, they mostly hire in the United States, but they, well, they do hire all over the world really. But a lot of their listings at the top here are in the United States but they do hire in other areas as well. Like for instance, they have a voiceover artist. They have a graphic designer. These are all contract positions as well. So I would not expect to get full-time hours with these. And they also have just a lot of other types of jobs available. Some of these, you gotta make sure that you don't apply for the on-site ones because obviously you will have to be in person for those. You have graphic designer, print and digital, podcast producer in the UK, freelance 2D animator in the United States. So some of these are on-site, some of these are remote. You just gotta make sure and look for the remote ones specifically. But if you say looked at the voiceover artist, for instance, a voiceover artist here, you know, what you would do is basically record yourself answering 10 provided questions in your native language. Ensure the recording is in 4K at 60 frames per second using a mobile phone. Follow the provided instructions carefully to ensure that recording meets the required specifications and submit the completed video recording within the specified time frame. So this is one of those things, I think this is more like a one-off type job, and this is more for training AI. So if you're into like AI jobs and you wanna just do like short-term or part-time type of jobs, you can do that. This one is $60 for 30 minutes of work. Now they also have like a graphic designer. So for this one, they're looking for someone who to create visually appealing designs for various mediums for our client. Now this is, I believe, more of an ongoing type of job. So this one, they want proven experience as a graphic designer or similar role, proficiency in Adobe Creative Suite, like Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, strong portfolio showcasing design work, knowledge of print advertising principles, experience with motion graphics and video editing software, and attention to detail and ability to meet deadlines. So these are just a few examples of the many different types of jobs you can find here but um, they have some that, again, are more like a one-off type of job that only takes 30 minutes, and then you have some that are more like ongoing jobs, but these are all pretty much for like creative types. So as far as what it's like to work here, now I had to do a little bit of research to really find their actual Glassdoor page because apparently there are a few different websites called, to called Twine, but you need to make sure it says twine.net on the uh, Glassdoor page to know you're on the right one and obviously you can match the logo as well. But they have a five out of five star rating, 100% recommend working here to a friend, which is good. 
Uh, benefit wise, I wouldn't expect benefits because most of these are contract positions and they don't really have much information on that anyway. Now, as far as how much you might get paid, they don't really have much information there either. They, they have a very small sample size of reviews so far. Now, one example of something that you find more frequently here is a graphic designer, which averages around $64,000 a year, which is right around that 30 to maybe like somewhere around the you know low 30s, 30 to $32 an hour or so. That's one of the most common jobs you'll probably find here on a consistent basis. Another thing you could do is do moderation services. So this is kind of similar to what I showed you at Live World. This is a place called Mod Squad. Mod Squad specifically specializes in moderation services and customer support. That's pretty much the jobs you always find here. Now, they have two places where you can apply. One is the careers page, which is this page right here. The thing about the careers page is most of these are gonna be more like traditional jobs, even if they are remote. You're talking management, you're talking uh, lead developers and stuff like that, as you can see. If you wanna just be a moderator and work part-time and be able to make your own schedule, you can check out just become a mod at the top right there. And once you do that, this is where you can sign up to be an independent contractor, work part-time, you get to make your own hours, they accept users worldwide, and you will do things like answer phone calls and texting with customers. You'll find them moderating posts on forums or online reviews, monitoring images, videos or live streams, chatting in game, play testing video games and stuff like that. That's essentially the different types of stuff you would be doing. Again, you'll find moderators all over the world speaking different languages, which means you shouldn't be super limited on where you can apply and you get to work remotely. They do ask that you have a private security noiseless home office setup, pick your own projects as well, set your own schedule, keep your day job. A lot of people here are moonlighters, stay at home parents, students and retirees. And you know, that's essentially what you're doing. You're a moderator. So you're going to be basically enforcing certain rules and managing some sort of community and making sure everybody's playing well with each other. 3.6 out of five stars, 67% recommend working here to a friend. So they have pretty solid ratings. Uh, as far as the interview process here, 2.3 out of 5 difficulty is very easy, and they have uh, more positive and negative reviews, which is also good. As far as how much you could get paid here, for a moderator at Mod Squad, typically it's not going to be a super high paying job in most cases, but if you, if you look at the top ones here, like moderator and content moderator, you're looking at somewhere around 25 an hour, 18 an hour, somewhere in that ballpark. We also have Lionbridge. Lionbridge is a company that has a lot of like translation jobs all over the world. And some of these, they don't really even put much as far as the location. So they just say anywhere. But they have all sorts of these translation jobs that you can do part time for all sorts of different languages. So for instance, um, if you're looking for something where Maybe you want to do like video translation and annotation or something like that. So you could look on there, click on the job listing, and they will tell you that they're looking for new people who speak one of the languages or a group of the languages that you see here. And then, you know, they will have you watch videos in your native language, translate them into English, and insert your comments or annotations in your translation to flag any potential slang, abusive, or hateful content present in the video. Detailed workflow guidelines will be provided by the PEM team. So you really get paid to watch videos and basically comment on what's in them and whether or not something needs to be flagged or not. Also requirements, so outside of the languages, basically regular users of social media, in particular online video platforms, very good level of English is required as well. So whatever language you see on here, a lot of times they still want you to have very good English. Uh, knowledge of CAT tools would also be a plus and flexible schedule, which allows you to jump on this work with no heads up. So basically you have long-term freelance partnerships, which is another nice thing to know about. Like when you talk about an independent contractor gig, like I, like I showed you some examples earlier at Twine, you have some where they're like one-off jobs or very short-term jobs. These can a lot of times, even though they're freelancer contractor positions, they can be long-term and ongoing. So that's kind of what you want to know, obviously, is how consistent are the hours at some of these. But you have the opportunity to work with an international team, and a lot of times you get to have very flexible hours with these types of gigs. So if you want something that's related to translation, annotation, and those types of jobs, that you can see right here, Lionbridge has a lot of these available. They have you know, 72 different listings right now for these 
And a lot of them are even in, va in gaming, automotive, fashion, and marketing. Some of them are all subject matters. So you can even pick the ones that are, like if you like video games, you could even do like, you know, some of the ones that are specific to that if you're interested. Now, as far as what's like to work at Lionbridge, they have a 3.5 out of 5 star rating and 71% of people recommend working here to a friend. I wouldn't expect benefits, so I'm going to skip that. Interview wise, 2.7 out of 5 difficulty is pretty good. And then experience wise, more than double of the people who left feedback here had a positive experience compared to negative, which is also a very good sign. Now, if you want to be like a translator here or an interpreter or something along those lines, you can look for their hourly pay ranges here and look for their reviews. So you see a lot of jobs that um, don't really fit exactly what they have listed the most right now. You do see interpreters with 32 people saying they average around $27 an hour. I don't see, here's an interpreter and translator right here, which is pretty much the same. So you're looking at looks like 27 to $28 an hour if these are accurate and if you know the US version is the same for you know the rest of the world. Last but not least, we have Working Solutions. Working Solutions is a great place to find US and Canada-based part-time customer service jobs that can be done remotely. So WorkingSolutions.com is the website. They have a very quick application process, which I know a lot of people like. You create a profile, add your experience, take a few assessments, PC scan, and then choose your opportunity, which all of that can be done in less than an hour. And then the jobs they have the most, again, are customer support. Occasionally you might find something like sales, but for the most part, you'll see stuff like this. Customer support, they have Canada and the US. They very frequently have both. It's not just mostly the US or mostly Canada with occasional on the other. It's very frequently they will have the same job duplicate for the other country. So they'll have two jobs in customer support, one for Canada, one for the US. They might have two sales jobs, one for Canada, one in the US. So they'll usually have like mirroring jobs that are pretty much the exact same for both countries, but make sure you apply at the proper listing because they usually are separate listings. So I'm just gonna use the US one as an example. Um, but what you usually do is you work from home the whole time. You never have to go to an office. You work when it's convenient for you, meaning you get to set your own schedule as long as it's within whatever the uh, the time frame is of peak hours. Uh, gain experience in different industries and support environments. And you also get experience using a lot of different types of customer support. So phone, email, chat, maybe even social media. You'll get a lot of experience here. It's a great place to kind of start out as a beginner. Earning potential, this one pays up to $19 per hour. I don't usually see them get much more than that. If you're wanting more pay, I would probably suggest going somewhere else. Typically, $19 to $20 an hour is kind of like the, the ceiling that you would make here. But that's because it's, you have maximum flexibility. You're working from home. You're a contractor. You get to set your own hours, and they don't usually require a degree or experience. Now, schedule, again, it could be usually anywhere from 15 to 40 hours a week, but you get to create your own schedule. So a lot of that is up to you. Skills needed, sincere desire to assist the customer, tech savvy and avid computer user, ability to multitask and navigate multiple systems and communicate with a friendly tone and professional demeanor, work environment requirements, quite uninterrupted space, organized desk area, and then technology requirements would be, you know, very simple, like Windows operating system that's pretty updated, broadband internet connection that's at least 10 Mbps, like none of this stuff is really hard to meet in terms of requirements. They also currently say like for the US, they're unable to work with contractors in California, New York, Pennsylvania, or Washington. And you do also need to pass a background check as well. As far as what's like to work at Working Solutions, they have a one, they have 1,000 reviews, 3.9 out of 5 stars, 80% recommend working here to a friend. I wouldn't think you're going to get any benefits here. You're an independent contractor. And the nice thing about them too is they are very easy to apply Four, they have a 2.2 out of 5 difficulty, 79% uh, positive compared to 14% negative is also a very good split. Almost 80% had a positive experience out of 125 people. And then again, it's usually $19 to $20 per hour. Hopefully this was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell if you want more daily work from home opportunities like these. If you thought this was a helpful video, please help me out by clicking the like button. It helps me understand what types of content you prefer. And also don't forget to leave a comment if you want to ask 
a question or suggest something that I cover in future videos, and I'll see you in the next one.